as you know, that our theme for this year, and I'm going to keep bringing it up because it's so important, it's crucial for our walk and our belief and our trust in God. And this is the year of spiritual obedience. And brother, sometimes and sisters, sometimes it's difficult when you're going through things. But you know, what is your alternative? What is the alternative that you have to go to if you're not trusting God's word? The challenge is that we sometimes forget. We try to operate more than a plan B, which is the world way of doing things, rather than a plan A in which God's instructed us to do it. And, and for that, it's a challenge. I did a teaching, and it's similar, but it's a different paradigm that the Lord is bringing this to me. We're living in times right now, brothers and sisters, that it's unpredictable, but yet predictable. I use the term, it's unpredictable because we don't know that we are doing certain things. I'm talking about believers right now. But it's predictable because God has already stated what happened in the past will continue to happen until his people get in line with his word. It's a challenge today, brothers and sisters, to differentiate what's spiritual right and what's spiritually wrong. Why? It's because there's something inside of us that has a check inside of us to let us know that's not right. But on the outside of our flesh, it wants to receive it as being right. Why? To be satisfied, to be gratified in doing what it's doing right now. And we know that's not right. One of the things, believers, I asked a question, and this is going to be your title this morning, and I'm going to take you this is for those in ministry, those who want to be in the ministry, and those who are just doing ministry to people, and that's all of us. And the most crucial person that you have to minister to is yourself. The title, Has Your Spirituality Become Cardinal? Has your spirituality become carnal? Another phrase, have your spirituality turned to carnality? Has your spirituality turned to carnality? What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that sometimes we can think we're so spiritually right and be so physically and spiritually wrong based on right versus righteousness. One of the challenges that we're seeing today in our society, especially in this country, is that we have those who are supposed to be called by his name, God's name, who are supposed to be walking in his truth, but trying to extend the lie. All because of, let me put it this way, selfish gains or selfish reason. You see, light will always expose darkness in our lives. And because of that light exposing the darkness, we try to hide it as if we can hide the darkness when light comes. But when light approaches, that darkness cannot stand. It will be exposed and will be eradicated. But the challenge is, do we want it eradicated in our lives? Or are we trying to close the door to light to keep that darkness there? God knows that. And God understood that. Uh, I was reading in, in the Old Testament how God had to look at his ministers, what they were doing, what they were not doing, because a lot of them were trying to satisfy the people, you know, the big shots in the community, the heavy titers in the community, those who, who, who they really was trying to please and satisfy rather than God. And the challenge, the real world was they were trying to serve two masters. And the reason a lot of them were trying to serve two masters is because they were trying to satisfy those who were more in line with what their flesh wanted than what God wanted for their lives. Bear with me on this one, brothers and sisters, because I want you to open your eyes to the truth. Because once you know the truth, even about yourself, even about yourself, it's the truth that shall make you free. You know, those close to you could, could tell you the truth about you, but you don't want to hear it. And you would say, oh, you just, you, that just, you, you just don't want to do this. Another person would say the same thing that the person close to you may say, but yet and still, you may listen more because you figure out, well, how do they know this? When the truth is right there in your own house or in your own uh, circle of influence. Has your spirituality turned to carnality or has it become carnal? Over in the book of Malachi, I turn to Malachi in the Old Testament. 
I'm reason I'm reason I'm using this because it's the last book in the Old Testament that was setting the stage for the New Testament of saints. It was taking the time to take what we know as old Jerusalem or, or, or old uh, Jewish nation into a nation of spirituality, to that nation of Israel. God was upset about his ministry and his people because he felt that they no longer were trying to follow the path that he had laid out. He had one, and he called it the Levitical priesthood under Levi, where he had told him the truth. But yet people still didn't want to live it. But you had other people within the priesthood itself trying to govern the things. And I'm saying it because see, we got people in the priesthood right now that would rather live a lie and share that lie than to live God's truth. It could be for any type of reason, financial reason, political reason, uh, uh, just, just reason that's not lying with God. And we're seeing it today. It's certain day. Let, let's get into this passage here. Malachi second chapter. Fourth verse. And this is God talking to his, his people, to those especially in the ministry and those who have been following the ministry. It says here in the fourth, second chapter, fourth verse, and ye shall know I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, said the Lord of hosts. He used Levi because Levi was really a man of God. And he and under this name, he started what he called the Levitical priesthood. He he went on, he said, said the Lord of hosts, verse five, my covenant was with him of life and peace. My covenant was with him of life and peace and gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. Was afraid. A lot of us, we do a lot of stuff because when it's said and done, we're really not afraid of God. Think about that for a minute. You do stuff because you're really in your spirit, not afraid of God. You you, you have, there are certain things that I wouldn't do, especially if my father had to get involved. My mother, I kind of, kind of can work her, but dad, I know I couldn't work. Vice versa, ladies, there were things you know you can work your father, but your mother, you couldn't get past with that. And therefore, you were somewhat afraid to try to accomplish certain things that you knew and had, had known that they would not like. But yet and still, as believers, a lot of stuff we do knowing that it's not something pleasing to God, but yet and still we do it because of being a lack of afraid of God. It goes on, it says here, verse five, read it again. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity. That equity is talking about statues. It, it, it's talking about uprightness. He said, and did turn many away from iniquity. This is what people in the priest supposed to be doing, and the priest should be doing. But a lot of them are trying to get them to follow their own path of destruction. It says, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge. This is what I try to share with you, because I know my responsibility to you has to come from God. My direction to you has to come from God. My responsibility to you and for you must be of a godly nature. It says here, but the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi said the Lord of hosts. We're seeing that a lot right now in ministries, where a lot of pastors and a lot of people in ministry have become self-serving, trying to use people for their own gain, trying to direct them uh, their own goals, trying to get them to follow their own political uh, entities. But yet, and still, as Christians, we're supposed to follow the truth. The truth, brothers and sisters. It says here, verse 9, therefore, have I also made you contemptible and have before all the people according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. I'm trying to serve two masters here. Verse 10, and this is the question. 
Have we not all one father? Have not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously, every man against his brother, by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Hmm. Very good question. Why do we do stuff to each other we know it's wrong? Or to others, no one is wrong. When God tells us to give seven times 70, he meant that. You know, he used the term seven times 70 because it should be one of the things that continuously. Some of us, we're so smart to ourselves, we'll say seven times 70 and we'll do it so long as we well, I met that goal. No, it's continuous. It's a symbol of continuality that you kind of can't let that reside in your heart. You have to let these things go in order to move forward with God. How many times have God forgiven us in our lifetimes, especially those of our senior citizens in age? It's been more than seven times 70. I can assure you of that. But yet and still, he loves us. He still has opened the gates of heaven for us who trust and believe in him. He still allowed us to become born again. Yet and still, in this born again state, why do we still allow a lot, a lot of carnality to rule with inside of us? You have to ask yourself this question. I, I want to read those verses from the Amplified. I started with the fourth verse. You can read along with the King James or your other uh, uh, version, but I'm going to read this from the Amplified. I start from the first, first, fourth verse, I'm sorry, second chapter, going down to the tenth verse. It says, and you should know, recognize, and understand that I have sent this new decree to you priests to be my new covenant. See, this is the opening door for the new spirituality, the new covenant, which is the New Testament. God says, I see right now, you all have, are trying to do the law your way, interpret it your way, try to get people to follow it your way based on your own interpretation. Now, I'm going to write it in not only your heart, but the hearts of my people. And I'm going to send another messenger who's going to make sure it's done the righteous way, not just the right way, which is of the flesh, but the righteous way. He goes on here and says here, a new decree to you priests to be my new covenant with Levi, the priestly tribe, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 5, amplified, my covenant on my part with Levi was to give him life and peace. Because on this part of the revenant worshipful fear with which the priest would revere me and stand in awe of my name. There are people, there are people in ministry most scared of what people would do to what God would do to them. Let me, let me just sit there. I'm not afraid of you, but I am afraid for that person who I'm going to meet one day with my knees bowed and have to open my mouth so my tongue can confess. See, that's what I'm really afraid of. And because of that, I can't compromise what he called me to do, and you shouldn't compromise what he has called you to do also. Because in the end, you don't have to worry about answering the man. You have to answer to him. Man can only do something temporary to this body, but God should do something permanent to your spirit. It goes on here. It says here in the sixth verse amplified, the law of truth was in Levi's mouth and uprightness was not found in his lips. Hmm. He walked with me in peace and uprightness and turned away from iniquity. Have, have you really turned away from iniquity? And do have, have the ministers that you may know about, have they turned away from iniquity? Are they still trying to hold on to the masters? Are they teaching you what's righteous? Or are they teaching you what's right in their eyes? Are they trying to follow a political group? Or are they trying to follow what the word says that they need to be doing or what you should be doing? You see, we're caught up now in this nation where our country is divided because of selfish things, where people know that certain people who are trying to gather direct are wrong. They are spiritually wrong, and yet and still, they're trying to make them right. And you have people who are following. Why are they following? Because what's really inside of them is now coming out. Brothers and sisters, we cannot escape the truth. We have to look at the truth. Well, that's my friend. This is why this expression about God knows my heart, dangerous, because it's your heart, that unrest heart that keeps you from doing what God is telling you to do. 
as a man think of in his heart, a woman thinking in her heart, so is he or so is she. What are you? Are you a believer? Are you a follower? Are you trying to serve two masters, which is self-serving and self-centered? We're speaking about this. Has your spirituality turned to carnality? Are you walking in the truth, God's truth? Or are you trying to walk in your own truth and you're trying to get God to go along with your mess? It goes on here. It says here, verse 9. No, I'm sorry, verse 8, amplified. But you have turned aside out of the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instructions in the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi with me, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, amplified. Therefore have I also made you despise and abase before all the people, inasmuch as you have not kept my ways, but have shown favoritism to, to persons in your administration of the law of God. Those who you know want, want you to go along to get along. Those who want you to be politically correct. Those who are getting away from the real truth of God's word. Brothers and sisters, you cannot live a lie. We cannot live a lie and think God's going to bless it. Cut and dry. You're either following his truth or you're following someone else's truth. All because you're trying to satisfy your flesh rather than satisfy the word that's inside of you. It goes on here, verse 10, Amplify. You read along with your verse, and uh, King James, whatever word you have. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why then do we deal faithlessly and treacherously each against his brother? Profaning the covenant of God with our fathers. We want people to be patient with us. But how patient are we with others? We want people to forgive us in our wrongdoings. But how forgiving are we with others in their wrongdoings? We want people to be understanding when we make mistakes. How understanding are we when we make mistakes? See, the challenge before us is that we're allowing a little darkness to creep in. Forgetting what the scriptures say, a little leaven, leaven up the whole lot. That little darkness, if it's not checked, it can't expand. And it has expanded in a lot of the lives of a lot of people. It's a challenge, brothers and sisters, that we who are called by his name must analyze and change. Drop down to verse 17. Verse 17. God said this because this he had to open the door for his son to come in. He said, you all have, have did it your way. I've given you the laws. You're, you're, you're supposed to be following what Levi and Levi trusted me. He was doing things uprightly. But you all have kind of bitch it off and begin to do things your way. And you've taken my people. You're scared of my people to follow that junk. Same things that we have with the leaders today in some of our countries around the world. They become so what you may call powerful that they didn't want to let that power go. They want to become dictators. In turn, sometimes we want to become dictators in our own homes, in our own lives, around our own people. My way or the highway. It doesn't work that way. It's got to be God's way or no way. No one outside of God's word and God's people who are anointed to share that word can lead you into righteousness. That's why God is writing his laws inside of each one of our hearts so we know that we know the truth. The Holy Spirit won't lie against itself. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it won't lie against it. It will come, it will it will come together in sync with itself. If you drop down to verse 17, that same chapter, in Malachi, it, you, and this is how it reads. I'm going to read both the King James and Amplified. It says, verse 17, second chapter, verse 17, it says, He have wearied the Lord with your words. 
Oh my God, you know, he I made uh, 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 even priests, long prayers, no substance. Talk just to be talking. He said, yet you say, wherein have we worried him? When you say everyone that doeth evil is good, <coughs> excuse me, when you say to everyone that, that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them, or where is the God of judgment? Read that from the Amplified. You have worried the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we worried him? You do it when by your actions you say everyone who do, does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them by asking, where's the God of justice? Brother, evil is evil. Sister, evil is evil. You can't hide it. You can try to cover it up. But God knows my heart. It's something you're trying to use as a cover, but you're continuously doing what you know is wrong. <clears throat> we can allow people to enter our life. We know that's doing the wrong thing. And follow that path rather than trying to say, wait a minute, that's not my life. Old things should pass away. All things should become new. We should be living a life by which God has ordained and anointed us. You see, if you're wondering why a lot of blessings are not there, maybe because the spirit of God in you is not there. Maybe you're allowing that darkness to override the light <clears throat> that you're supposed to be following. You see, once you know the truth, which is God's truth, it's that truth that should make you free. You can allow yourself to be taken or persuaded all because you're trying to satisfy your flesh. You've got to take a stance and allow, allow, not allow yourself to be weary. And I said, grow weary and well do. You see, our God is a good God. I knew I could finish all this, but we got a part two. And we're going to talk about that carnality versus that spirituality. But you gotta first ask yourself, has my spirituality turned to carnality? Would I rather believe a lie and live a lie rather than live the truth? Am I allowing the darkness to override the light that's inside of me? Am I following those who's calling evil good and good evil? Whatever may pass, Am I trying to cover the truth based on a lie that's living inside of me? me Father, right now in the name of Jesus, as we come before you right now, we come before you in a submissive and humble state, asking your forgiveness, Father God, according to 1 John 1 and 9. Your word said that we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, anything we've said, done, implied, thought, or acted upon that was not of you, Father, we ask for your forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. We ask and repent right now in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, we know that the prayers of the righteous, not the right, avail of much. And we want our prayers to be heard and received by you. But we know that we have to be in that right standing, Father. Lord, we ask, Father God, that your word also stand in the gap. The word that you said to heal and to deliver, stand in the gap on our behalf, Father. Because, Lord, we want that repentant state to reside with us, Father. We ask it, Father God, in your most precious in Jesus' name. Father, allow our eyes, our spiritual eyes to be truly open. That our spiritual ears be truly unstuck. That we not only see the truth, but hear the truth. But allow that soulless realm inside of us, our minds and our will and our emotions, to follow that truth, Father. Oh, Lord, we thank you today for what was said. We thank you, Father God, for not kicking us to the curb. We thank you for keeping a door open, a way of escape to get back unto you. We praise you. We thank you. We count all these things done this day and each and every day. In your most precious in Jesus' name, let the church say, amen.